Have you heard of a male concubine? Well, you might have watched Korean, Chinese, Japanese, and other imperial films with emperors and kings having female concubines. But did you know that young males were formerly chosen in African history to be concubines to wealthy and powerful kings, while allowing them to live lives of luxury and privilege? From their origins and culture down to their strange rituals and duties, we will discuss the bizarre culture of the African Empire and how male concubinage lived during that era, so make sure you keep watching. Concubinage in Africa To start with, most of us might have heard from history class that one of the oldest and most pervasive illusions about Africa is the idea that gender diversity and homosexuality are either non-existent or incidental. Despite their prevalence in African Islamic royal situations, concubines are an understudied subject in the field of African history studies. Although it sounds like something from a bizarre fiction book, this event actually occurred in African history, and you won't believe how common they were back then. Concubinage is a system in which powerful men, such as kings, nobles, and wealthy merchants, maintain women or men as their sexual companions. These powerful men frequently displayed their male concubines at ceremonies and public occasions, showcasing their attractiveness and desirability. As a result, people who have concubines are often seen as wealthy and influential. African empires are the term used in African studies to describe a number of pre-colonial African kingdoms with multinational systems that, typically by conquest, merged numerous populations and polities into a single entity. During this era, African rulers used to have male concubines all the time, as much as they also had female concubines on the side. While we mentioned that male concubines were pretty popular, they were a distinctive aspect of various African dynasties, and they led lifestyles that were unheard of. But still, this does not erase the fact that they existed, and most African rulers would prefer their company, male concubines, and their roles. Male concubines were originally associated with ancient Greece or Rome, but as mentioned above, African empires encouraged this idea too. But did these concubines live a life of glamour, riches, privileges, or rivalry just like the ones we see in imperial films? Or was it a complete misery? Well, prominent leaders of Africa kept male concubines for various reasons. It might be for reasons to form alliances or show subordination. The reasons are endless. But most of the time, the concubines were often utilized as political tools and presented to other monarchs as presents or tributes. It has been centuries since this blasphemous practice began, but this was just relevant in several African regimes. At the same time, male concubines played a vital role in court life. This means they indeed have a complex position and prestige inside the royal courts. They occasionally received privileges and affluence that most people could only imagine, and as a result, were always pampered with fine clothing, jewelry, and luxurious living quarters. Lastly, one of the most important roles that a male concubine had to play in the lives of their rulers was to give pleasure and companionship in sexual services. Male concubines were often valued and adored for their beauty, wit, and loyalty. Some even attained positions of authority and influence within the court, serving as the ruler's advisors or in charge of managing specific facets of the administration of the kingdom. They were also expected to be well-versed in arts, music, poetry, and dance to entertain the ruler and their guests with their talents. However, their status was far equal to the ones of a ruler or even other high-ranking officials. Despite mostly living luxurious lives, they were frequently subject to the whims of their monarch and were even seen as having a lower social position than free men and were left with no choice but to abide by tight protocols, procedures, and norms. They were also subject to a strict code of conduct and were required to always be submissive and respectful of the law. For instance, male concubines typically woke up early in the morning before the ruler or other court members. They would begin their morning grooming routine by taking a bath, removing unwanted hair, and exfoliating their skin. This was to ensure they were always presentable for their masters. After grooming, they dressed up in their finest clothes and made their way to the dining hall. There, they would prepare breakfast for their ruler and make sure that their masters were well taken care of. But their duties do not end there. In the afternoon, male concubines may attend meetings with their masters and other court members, 
by providing advice and input on various intelligent concepts on certain matters such as trade negotiations or military campaigns, things that wives and women concubines cannot do. When evening came, male concubines would prepare their master's evening meal, dress him for dinner, and then start giving pleasure by entertainment. After dinner, male concubines may retire to their quarters or socialize with other court members. As the night deepens, a male concubine may be summoned by his master for companionship and other matters their master deemed necessary. It is important to note that the experiences of male concubines in African empires varied vividly depending on their status and the attitudes of their masters. There were masters who abused and mistreated male concubines in which they were often forced to perform sexual acts against their will. If this happens, male concubines will have no word over their own lives and are not allowed to be in love with anyone else but the master alone. The Kingdom of Dahomey was one example of an empire that made extensive use of male concubines. This empire existed in the 17th to 19th century in what is now the modern-day Benin. The ruler of Dahomey was called King or Oba, and under his rule, male concubines were known as Gibetto. Just like any other male concubine, Gibetto's role was the same. However, their primary role boiled down to offering sexual companionship to the king, the selection and grooming process. In African dynasties, the selection and grooming of male concubines was a fascinating and frequently enigmatic process. The selection process depends on the specific empire and ruler, but there were some common themes and practices among the selection. Usually, the male concubines were a selection from the ruler's own court or neighboring kingdoms, and most of the time, they were selected for their physical beauty, intelligence, and talent. In some instances, rulers personally selected the concubines they favored, while at other times the selection was left to trusted advisors or eunuchs. When selected, the male concubines were groomed, trained, and educated with various skills and proper etiquette in a court. As a result, they were granted access to administrative aspects and even given fine education and you will not believe the strict and over-the-top rules they had to follow after being selected to serve their masters. They were dressed in the finest clothes, ornamented with jewelry, and had even undergone cosmetic procedures. Can you imagine what cosmetic procedures were possibly done to men during ancient times? Male concubines' teeth had to be filed and their bodies tattooed for them to become better-looking men. They were expected to maintain a level of physical fitness and appearance and were often subject to dietary and hygiene rules. Just like the geishas of Japan, male concubines were trained to become excellent entertainers to their rulers and guests. It might be safe to say that concubines were expected to perform any act of entertainment that would give pleasure to their master and to the guests, and at most, being a male concubine is a demanding way of life. In fact, Entertainment was very vital to the role of male concubines in ancient Africa. For instance, if the ruler took a fancy to a particular concubine and favored them, they were often housed in special quarters within the palace or some other elite residences. Perks and Privileges Surprisingly, male concubines were also provided with servants of their own. These quarters were adorned with luxurious furnishing and ornaments reflecting the high status of the concubines and their masters. The kings often showered them with gemstones, pearls, and beautiful fabrics. That's how they show their affection after being sexually satisfied with the concubine. But in exchange for this lavish treatment, a male concubine must always be ready to make his master happy, and at most, it's a price they have to pay for the life they choose to live. However, this is not the only privilege they receive because they are also exempted from paying taxes and other duties that were imposed on the general population. They were given extra special treatment in terms of food, housing, and medical care, and were often allowed to travel to experience new cultures and environments. Another good thing is that male concubines enjoyed the protection and patronage of their masters. The practice of male concubinage had a significant impact on African empires' societies and cultures. One of the significant impacts includes ideas on gender roles and relationships. The presence of male concubines changed the traditional adherence to masculinity, feminism, and the idea of monotonous relationships. It was a discipline that permitted some gender and sexual experimentation, 
which could be both liberating and frightening. As a result, social hierarchy became more fluid, frequently at variance with conventional notions of position and authority. The life of a male concubine was not a walk in the park. While there were kings who treated their male concubines with respect, there were still others who did the complete opposite, and sadly, male concubines who fell out of favor with the king were punished severely. While the life of male concubines in ancient Africa is not as simple as it seems, it is undeniable that they left a mark on the country's society. At most, they opened possibilities for people to see that gender can be fluid, and there's nothing wrong with that. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more.